Hi everyone, and welcome to EU People. Today we receive Christina Neuger, she is the head of the Europa website. Neither a geek nor a bureaucrat, we will talk about her personal story, the EU, and how she ended up managing one of the biggest websites in the world. We will also test her internet pop culture and see if she can match your sense of humor. So join us and meet the woman behind your click. I am here with Kristina Neuer, Hungarian from Budapest and mother of two. She arrived in Brussels as one of the first TV reporters from an Eastern European country. You might have seen her on Magia Televisio if you were watching in the late 90s, but now she's hiding behind the Apple links of the Europa web pages. Welcome, Kristina. So, Kristina, are you a geek? No, if anything, I'm a digital conservative. Digital conservative, what do you mean? Well, that I like digital, but only if it is well done. I really like robustly built things that work for a long time, that have been well thought through, and I'm not necessarily falling for gadgets or very attractive things. You arrived in Brussels as one of the, of the first um, correspondent uh, from an Eastern European country, but how was it at that time to, to report about the EU even before Hungary was a member state? Even at that time, uh, we have never seen ourselves so far remotely from mm -hmm. the European Union. And this was, by the way, one of the very interesting discoveries when I arrived, that many people considered Europe only as the Western part of it. Whereas since my birth, I've always considered myself as a European. And from our perspective, we were always Europeans. Uh, I learned that when you arrived, there was quite many crises in, uh, in Europe. And uh, so you arrived directly uh, during the crisis. Can you tell us about about this a bit more? Yeah, the the uh, track of events that was very important at this moment in time was the crisis in the Balkans uh, and the mm -hmm. war in Kosovo. So we were basically sleeping and, uh, and, so and we spending found the old time. pictures of you um, back in Kosovo, you, what was happening here? So you were there on yes, this picture? Yes, indeed. So uh, for a number of months, we were covering the crisis of many journalists here from NATO headquarters. And then uh, we were told about the day when K4 troops were entering Kosovo. Mm. And we were encouraged to go there and, and cover uh, the, the situation on the ground. And well, uh, on the photo, what we see is already uh, a few days after we arrived to Kosovo, to Pristina, when I was uh, discussing with a UCK mm. soldier <laughs> in, yeah. in the street and, and learned about all the things that have happened Did you happened feel it there. was historic at that moment? Did you feel something really yes. important was happening? Absolutely. Already? And I mean, this was not uh, in particular, uh, the Kosovo situation was was really, really not just historically, but also personally very shocking for me. I have seen there things that I could have never imagined mm. that is possible uh, uh, to see that, uh, uh, that ethnic cleansing can indeed happen at the door of the European Union at that time. And actually, uh, it also showed me the importance of the European Union and, and the European Union as a peace project. Let's get to know you more. I've got some speed dating questions for you. So I'm going to put you in front of two choices, two simple choices, and you're going to tell me which one you prefer. So it's simple. We got one minute and uh, let's see how far we can get. Ready? Ready. Tea or coffee? Coffee in the morning, tea in the afternoon. Cats or dogs? None. <laughs> 8 a.m. or 8 p.m.? 8 a.m. Goulash or carbonade? Goulash. <laughs> Budapest or Brussels? Budapest. Hungarian or English? Hungarian. Français or English? English. <laughs> Français is better. <laughs> Suit or sweatshirt? Sweatshirt. Discussion or debate? Discussion, sometimes debate. <laughs> <laughs> Communication or information? Communication. Journalist or spokesperson? Journalist. <laughs> ah, interesting. Decision or compromise? Compromise, but many people will say I'm more into for decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the screen or on the ground? On the ground. Hashtag Monday motivation or Friday feeling? Friday feeling. Angry Birds or Candy Crush? None. Family or friends? Both. Restaurant or picnic? Picnic. And being in your 20s or being in your 40s? Oof, 40s. That's mm. over. So in 2004, you decided to quit journalism to join the European Commission as a spokesperson. How come? 
Well, I had a little intermezzo before the spokespersonship. I worked uh, very shortly with the first Hungarian commissioner in his cabinet. Mm -hmm. And I was extremely interested by the challenge of uh, looking behind the curtain. So when you have been covering EU affairs for a while, it is really, really intriguing to see how the machinery works behind, how these policies are being elaborated, what are all these people doing. So I was very excited about that. What was the most difficult in being a spokesperson? Did you lose your freedom of expression? Because you were a journalist before, so you were quite, quite free to say whatever you want, and then you become spokesperson. So. Well, I don't think that things are so black and white. <laughs> if you are a journalist, you also don't see what, say whatever you want, but whatever facts you find on the table, and, and you have to be very objective. It's not about your uh, own personal opinion. Still, but what, what is difficult in being a spokesperson? The difficult part was uh, when you come from journalism and from a community of the press room, where I really felt at home, that was difficult, because obviously when it came to the private conversations with friends, I could not be as outspoken as I used to before. I had to pay much more attention to the to the things I shared with them, the way I spoke about events and people, the I behind the scenes. I can't believe that, that you were starting to, to be different with your friends. I, I was not different with my friends, but I have to admit that I avoided some situations. There were certain parties I didn't go to, or oh, there were, yeah. I hope they don't learn it right now. So. <laughs> no, it, 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 it happened occasionally. And I must say what was difficult as well when some of these very personal relationships were following me in relative private spheres, like in a fitness center, a journalist came up to ask me a question about yeah. my job. And that was really uncomfortable because I would have loved to reply as a friend. But frankly, I was not working there. Yeah. So uh, I was doing my, my, my fitness. So. It's not appropriate it as well to ask questions when you're doing your fitness. No, but we it happens. <laughs> we found some old footage of you as you were a spokesperson. Oh Do you want god. to see them? Yeah. It I was a rhetorical them. question anyway, so. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, remember a tough moment in, in this experience? Uh, how did the enlargement go? I, I guess there were some also difficulties in that. Yes, of course, there were many difficulties and delicate situations. As a tough moment, I mean, the really tough moment in the everyday life is, is the one we see on the footage, because standing on that podium is extremely tough. Uh, you, don't, you never know what is the question you will be asked. Has there been any crazy moment in, the, in this time as a spokesperson? <laughs> there have been many crazy moments. <laughs> one of the crazy moments was when I lost uh, my commissioner, Oli Rehn, at Vienna airport. <laughs> oh. Uh, for some misunderstanding, the gates were very strangely organized. He went to another gate than I went, <laughs> and uh, I went into the plane and I couldn't find him anywhere. And we had to call him and all the stewardesses were running and uh, they wanted to close the plane. And I was <laughs> almost in a hysterical outburst that, no, I can't live without my commissioner. <laughs> but then uh, he, he ended up arriving. <laughs> so I have another short archive to show you. Look at this. The date is important. He was back on the 25th of February 1995. So do you know what it was about this day? Well, the, the day I wouldn't have remembered. The day sounds very familiar to the birth of Europa. It's, it's this, yeah. The, the big web domain uh, that uh, we are managing and uh, for which my team and I are responsible at the moment, at least for the coordination and governance part of it. So. How did it look back then? Well, it, it looks like you see it <laughs> with the many little sta stars. Uh, uh, and it looked as it had to look at that time, uh, what was possible uh, to do with the technology uh, at, at that moment and in how time. how does it look right now? Europa is a whole domain, including a, num a large number of websites. It is encompassing all the websites of all the EU institutions. And just as regards the Commission, the Commission itself owns more than 800 websites. This is already huge. Um, what we calculate in our own uh, Commission uh, domain is more than 400, 140 million unique visitors a year who are visiting uh, our websites more than 220 million times. And how do you see the website in 10 years, in 20 years? Will it still exist? I don't think that the discussion is about websites as such. Huh? We are in a very dynamically moving digital world. 
Uh, there are different digital solutions and be it social media, the website or tools or applications. This is not what really matters. I think what really matters is the journey we do among those channels is how we discover the information. So I am coming from the communication angle. For me, what matters is how we use all this to communicate something or to give access to a service or to an information. It's not about technologies. It's not about websites. They are helping us to realize a different purpose. We should not be driven by the tools that are our hands. The tools should allow us to achieve our objectives. I have a last game for you about the internet culture. We have here some really nice mice from different ages, so I don't know which one you prefer. Well, the 1980s or the last one. <laughs> oh, the last one, the marvelous uh, European uh, mm. mouse. I'm going to ask you five questions, and your price will be better each time you answer right a good question. Okay, then it's safe, because I, if I only manage one question, I Actually, get Actually, that's my favorite as well. <laughs> so, are you ready? More or less. Could you give me three nicknames of the at sign in different EU languages? Arobaz. That makes one. How many I have to give? Three. Three, I don't have three. Uh, in Hungarian. Kukats. 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 And in German. Affen... Uh, Affen was? Affen... Affenschwanz. Affenschwanz. So, next question. Today, there are as many websites on the World Wide Web as trees in the Amazon rainforest, cows in the world, or stars in the Milky Way. <laughs> Would it help well, you if I give you the numbers of those? So. No, it would not help me because <laughs> I don't know the stars in the Milky Way uh, either. Between 200 and 400 well, billion. Let's go for the cows. The cows is the right <laughs> answer. So it's 1.5 billion ah. websites in the world and also cows in the, in the world. According to estimations, are there more cats or dogs memes online? Cats, you, I would say. That's the right answer. Actually, yeah. so um, according some, to some studies, there are more the cats rule the internet, but the share of dogs meme is growing faster. Good Very interesting know. data. I, I would like to know who has time to <laughs> investigate. <laughs> Do you remember Tom? Why does his picture now belongs to the internet culture? Tom? No. So it's actually Thomas Anderson, and he was the founder of MySpace. And actually, his picture was the first one to be suggested as your friend on MySpace. And now it's become part of the internet culture. Okay, good to learn. So you don't <laughs> go for the European uh, mouse. Last question. Which of the following emojis will not be rolled out soon? So we've got the ginger head. We've got the cold face. We've got the roll of paper. Or we've got the duck face. Duck face. That's the right answer. That's the duck face. Yeah, but this was just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> At least you got it right. So actually, you go with a with a, this nice mouse, but you. But you, I didn't you. want it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the game. Sorry, that will be for our next guest. So that's for you. Thank you. So you got a new, better mouse. I hope you like it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the answers. Thank you for the game. Thank you everyone for watching. You can now comment, share online, you can redo the quiz, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again with our next guest.